Hello everyone and welcome back. It's your girl Tally Cigarelli coming with you, coming to you with another video. Um, this video has actually been on my chest for a little minute and I was just, just trying to think of how I'm going to get this off to you guys. And um, again, I feel like it's a really important topic for us women, us single women to um, understand. And it is about do not be desperate. Now, I know that word is like, you know, it's a shocking word. It sizzles, you know, it hurts when you hear it. Um, and the fact of the matter is, as much of it is, as it does hurt when you hear it, um, it's still at the same time, too many people experiencing and demonstrating that behavior of being desperate you know so if being if saying not to be desperate or using the word desperate is a very um derogatory term towards you as it is towards me then actually being that should be just as derogatory if you understand what i'm saying so what it is that is that you know we understand that being desperate is not a good thing being desperate is is a is a bad look. It's not something that anybody wants to look like. It's not something that anybody wants to demonstrate. No one wants to be called that. No one wants that said about them. So if that's the case, then if we don't want that said about us, if we don't want to be called that, then we need to not be that. You understand that? So it doesn't do any good to just not use the word and be like, oh, I'm not desperate. Because that's what a lot of people say when you bring that to them. They're like, oh, I'm not desperate because they just don't want to be called desperate. But on the other hand, they're displaying behaviors that are seen as desperate. Now, in, there's many cases that can cause a woman to be desperate. And um, in in a lot of cases, it's because, you know, age, you're getting up there and then you're seeing that your friends are getting married and you you see that you're not getting married. Maybe you're like a bridesmaid or a wedding invite at many of these weddings and you see, wow, like my friends are getting married and I'm not getting married. Like what's going on? Is there something wrong with me? And, you know, it's it's usually that, that's usually the age factor. And a lot of the times it's also maybe that we've never experienced love growing up. There's a lot of traumatic events that happened that, kept, that you know, we were, we were not able to experience what real unconditional love felt like. So now we're just searching for it in a relationship. And that causes a lot of us to never have any type of single time. And every time, like we're just going from one relationship to the next. Um, that's something that I've definitely, you know, seen in, in other people. We just go from one relationship to the next because we're just trying to find something and we're ever trying to find it but apparently it's just not there and a lot of the times we need validation now a lot of these things they're going to come together it's all it, it all works in tandem which means it works together you know and ultimately what we're just looking for is love but another thing we're also looking for that works is validation. So we want validation from society. Like, look, I can be loved. Someone can love me. And we want to post those pictures on social media, letting everybody know that, look, someone loves me. Somebody wants to be with me, you know? And as a single woman, don't get me wrong. I fight those feelings too, you know? I see, you know, people, you know, who find people, who find their mate, you know, who, who, who are getting married, okay? And I'm thinking, wow, you know, like I definitely want that for me. But one thing that I have chosen not to do is to get desperate, which means I'm not going to rush anything. I know that everything has come, will come in my due season and due time. So I have chosen to trust in God that he will send somebody for me at the perfect time for me when I am ready. So that's one of those things that keep me from getting desperate. So as a woman, it's important that you find something, the things that will keep you from getting desperate. 
and a big factor that really keeps me from far away from getting desperate other than the fact that I know it's gonna come in due season other than the fact that I know that when you get desperate it's a it's a form of weakness and when you choose something or you try to get something out of weakness you'll never get what you want you'll always get something that is wrong for you that's what i understand so other than understanding those two things a big factor that keeps me from going that route is the fact that i am actively working on myself now before I started actively working on myself. I didn't understand much of what people were talking about because I've watched other people who, you know, who talk about this subject, who talk about women being prepared, preparing themselves, focusing on themselves, not feeding into society, not feeding into what the messaging that you're getting from society that's causing you to want to to be desperate, you know? Instead of feeding into those messages, I've chosen to listen to some of these other messages, the positive messages that tell you, you gotta work on yourself. And I'm telling you, the more that I'm working on myself, the more that I'm investing in myself. Now, when I'm saying investing in myself, it, I also mean I'm thinking like I'm going over myself. I'm doing an interview. And also what they call it is an interview of myself. And I'm I'm checking every every box. I'm going over like my history, things that have affected me, and I'm really taking inventory of everything that I have within myself. And I'm really examining it and I'm choosing to to um to interpret some of my behaviors i'm um, examine it to choose what i need what i need to let go of what i need to transform from what i need to change around and excuse me doing this has really kept me busy it's really kept me busy because i've realized that i i don't need to be worried about who who's gonna come into my life I need to worry about if I'm ready as a person, as a woman, for someone to come into my life. Because I'm telling you guys, marriage is beautiful. But marriage is not easy, people. And what we need to understand is the best position that you can be in and to get into involved with a marriage to get involved with someone else to get into relationship is to know yourself and to love yourself that is the best thing we can do because to know yourself and to love yourself is gonna be an advantage for you a lot of people are getting into situations they don't know themselves they don't love themselves and they're expecting to be fulfilled they're expecting for this other person to complete them and what we know that what the data shows is another person cannot complete you okay the only way i know that i'm completed i know that i'm completed in jesus christ all right and that's what who i recommend that can complete you too but if that's not your belief that's not your faith i just want you to know that it is i do not believe that another person can complete you so you need to find your completeness your healing your wholeness outside of a relationship in order to be the best that you can be in a relationship because then then you're going into that relationship with expectations that are not going to be met and that's where we find a lot of brokenness a lot of broken relationships you know a lot of hurting people a lot of toxic situations because we're expecting something to complete us that has never had the ability to complete us so as we're taking this time and we're being single and we're waiting for that perfect time, that perfect season, even though nothing's ever perfect, but something's perfect for you. Like somebody else's season of finding their mate is not your season, you know? So as we're waiting on your season, you need to be working on yourself, okay? Mentally, physically, financially, whatever you can do to get yourself to the next level. Um, being fulfilled in yourself is the goal. Feeling complete in yourself is the goal. Healing 
from past traumas that you have experienced that still weigh heavy on you, that still kind of control your minds and decisions. That's important because the last thing I want to do is go into a relationship affected negatively by past traumas and project those traumas, that mindset on the person I'm dating. You know, and I know that we can't be 100%. Nobody's going to be 100% when they go into a relationship. But the more, the more effort you can put in, the better. The better. I want to change my mindset. I want to have a more positive mindset. I want to feel complete within myself. I want to, I want to heal from the things I have been through so I don't affect this other person. And you know what? Honestly, I want that other person to do the same also. So if I get to a certain age and I'm still not there yet, then I need to, as a woman, as a person, I understand that it's, I need more time. So people, it's just so important. You know, Valentine's Day just passed. And, you know, Valentine's Day to me, it's not really a big deal. It's not a day that I'm like, oh my God, um, I, I need somebody. I don't have nobody. I'm feeling bad. No, because honestly, Valentine's Day, I, I've never really had, you know, a really good Valentine's Day with a significant other. You know, it was never like that serious to me. So I guess, you know, because it was never that serious to me, it's not a day that I hold in high regard but i know there are some people that do and they're they those certain things or posts on social media they see all these celebrities getting you know a grand display and grand gestures of love and they allow those things to make them feel down and out on themselves and i'm telling you people it's not worth it focus on yourself focus on your goals your dreams and this is exactly what i'm doing in my life right now so i'm not telling you anything that i'm not actively pursuing i'm actively pursuing my goals my dreams this is what i'm focused on so it does keep me busy you know and it keeps me too busy i'm actually too busy to worry about a significant other at this point in time you know i know that time will come you have to know that time will come and you can't be too pressed for it you can't be too desperate for it you understand because when you choose things out of desperation as i mentioned and you choose it from a weak point in your life and when you're choosing something from a weakness from a weak point in your life you're not able to choose properly you're not able to choose the best for yourself you're not able to recognize what you need and what you don't need and you're not able to recognize what's a deal breaker now deal breakers as i already have said in the past deal breakers are things that are that if done that the relationship should be over but a lot of the times if we're in that desperate state we're not able to recognize things that completely disrespect us things that completely that we know that if this is done to me like the standard that i have for myself me and you cannot be together no more because what, what does desperation do desperation allows you to compromise with your self-respect you compromise with your self-worth and that's what we don't want you to do because you may be desperate now and you may choose someone out of desperation and you may compromise your self-worth your self-respect your self-love now but there's gonna come a time later down the line that your eyes will be open and the truth will be exposed and you're gonna realize what you compromised now wasn't worth it in the long run you know, there's going to be a time where more something else becomes more important to you. And what I see is a factor that usually becomes more important than the person that you marry, you fall in love with, is when you have a child. Now, it usually takes, if everything else didn't stick out to you and you didn't read the signs and allow yourself to part for somebody from somebody who wasn't for you from the beginning when you have a child with somebody and you have your own child and you love your child more than you love this person 
And you see that this person is not only not healthy for you, but this person is also not healthy for your child or what this person, how this person's treating you is diminishing your ability to be the best parent you can to this child. When you see that, that makes you see things clearly. That makes you see this person clearly. And you see that, wow, this person is not really for me. This person is not supportive. This person is not loving how I thought this person was. But what we don't want to do anymore is we don't want to take it to the point where we're intertwined in a whole different level of relationship. We're married or we're, we have a child with this person for us to see that this person is not for us. We want to see this these traits from the beginning. And before we even see these traits from the beginning, we want to make sure before we even find this person, this is the before before, you know? We say that we, we want to see that this person is not for us before we build a, a life with this person. But we can see if a person's not for us before we even know this person. Okay, and you know how we do that? We make sure that we're not choosing someone out of weakness, out of out of scarcity, scarcity feeling like we don't where someone's not coming uh, or we have to choose before we get too old or we got to choose so people don't think that, you know, we're not worthy of love. Before we even find this person, we should make sure that we are right from within. We have done the work from within to love ourselves. To to we have chastised ourselves. We have checked ourselves. We have done the interview, the inventory, to check what's in us, so we can transform into a better form, a better form of the person we're trying to be. We want that's what we want to do. We want to get to our best selves every day. We want to work on our best selves, and in working to be your best self you your mindset will change and you'll be able to identify someone who isn't for you and someone who is for you and it's not going to take you until you have a different level of commitment to that person to see if that person's for you and also you'll be okay with letting this person go letting this person go and that's a really big problem that i see especially amongst women we have a big problem letting someone go who's not for us and i do believe the reason we have that issue is because in our minds we're thinking that we can't find somebody more suitable or more compatible with us we're thinking that we can't find somebody that is better for us like we have to stick with this person because we don't know when another person is gonna come and i'm telling you we need to get out of that mindset that is a scarcity mindset so what is scarcity scarcity is feeling like there's not enough so you gotta hold on and be greedy with what you have what well, that could be money and things too you gotta hold on and you be greedy with what with what you have because you don't know if or when you're gonna get more of it and this is not the way to look at life about anything in life, it is your mindset. It is the mind. You hear many people say this, and I'm buying into it because I know in my heart is the truth. What you think, as you think, is as you are. As you think, as you believe, makes you who you are. So if you're thinking that life is scarce and everything you have, you got to hold on to it because you don't know when you're going to get more of it and you're living in that scarcity mindset, then that's how you're going to live. But if you look at life, the opposite way and you look at life through the lens of abundance and abundance is thinking that there's always going to be more so i can give i can give away i can be free with my resources because because more will always be provided so if you think from that mindset you'll also be in that mindset with your relationships and you'll say you know what if this is not working for me another Thing is on the way a better person is on the way for me and I'm gonna trust for me I'm gonna trust in God that another thing that is better better suited for me is on the way and I promise you this is the mindset we need to think about it doesn't matter what this world told you a lot of us including myself this world has told you that you're not pretty enough this world has told you that you're not 
you're not fine in love this world has told you that you're too too big that you're too dark it's been telling you a lot of things that have pu pushed us into a place of scarcity thinking that you know what i'm not good enough so i got I have to hold on to what comes to me and we have to let go. Those are the things, those traumatic things that's happened to us over the years that I'm talking about that we need to evaluate and we need to let go of because we need to understand that those things are not true. Those things have kept us and held us back from who we're supposed to be. So the, the, the quicker, the sooner we evaluate these things that were told to us and we heal from it and we let it go and we forgive those people who lied to us about these things, the, the sooner that we can achieve, we can ch change our mind and achieve our best selves and understand that, you know what, I am worthy of somebody who's compatible for me. I am worthy worthy of someone who actually loves me who's actually interested in me who doesn't want me for for things or what can I do my status my money my looks you know I don't I deserve somebody who really wants me for me not for the vain things but for the real things the real things that when you achieve them you can actually build a strong foundation that can stand the test of time over time and that's what we really want. But if we really want those things, we have to stop being desperate. Stop thinking that you can't find something better for you. Work on yourself. Uh, achieve that self-love, that self-worth. Bring your self-love, your, self, your sense of self-worth, your sense of self-love. Bring it to that next level within you. Find out how to be complete in yourself. Find out how to heal from the things that have happened to you so you can be a whole and healed person when you meet somebody so you can be able to discern if this person is for you and when you discern that this person is for you you'll be able to build a healthy foundation but until we get to that point we'll see a lot of us are still going to continue to choose people out of desperation out of weakness and in a in a long run and for some of us not in such a long run we're going to come to find out that we've chosen wrong that we've chosen someone who hurts us, who diminishes our self-worth, who takes away from us rather than adding on and giving to us. And unfortunately, we're going to have to pay the consequences of that. So if you're watching this video, this is your opportunity to make another decision. Even if you have made that same decision in the past, as many of us have, this is your opportunity to do a turnaround and make a new decision. Even if you have fell into that pattern in the past, this is your opportunity to change your ways. Every day is a new day, a new day of grace and mercy to, to make a different decision about yourself, to change your mind, to go a different way. So take this as your opportunity to do so, people. And don't waste it. Life is a gift and it's worth living. And we all make mistakes, but it's about moving forward, forgiving yourself, forgiving others, healing and being being new and walking in your purpose and your calling and finding out who you're called to be so you can live it out and feel be fulfilled all by yourself. And I truly believe that for you all. And I'm trusting that you will walk into your destiny, that you will walk into your calling and you will completely buy in to that abundance mindset and you will do what's best for you and you will achieve that self-love. You will go on that self-love journey and you will truly become your best self. And I'm excited for you. All right, so thank you for listening. Um, of course, if you have any questions, just DM me. Um, I love you guys. Have a good one.